Hi, and in this video I'd like to go over the buildings that we can get from the Broken Shore, the ones that we spend our hard-earned war supplies on. These guys here, the Mage Tower, the Command Center, and they're the Disruptor. Now, we've had all of these activated now on both NA and EU realms, so I thought it would be about time that we went through the features of each one and to see, first of all, in what order they are in terms of usefulness. Are they all of equal usefulness? Are some more useful than others, certainly more desirable than others? And are they even worth doing at all in terms of the extra work you would have to do that you might not be all that bothered about if you've got your rep up to the point where you get flying now? So if we have a quick look at these. So the Mage Tower was the first up, which is why it's now again under construction, followed by the Nether Disruptor, and then the command center went up basically a day after the nether disruptor. So they're both active now. The nether disruptor has not got that much longer to go. So if we look at the mage tower, first of all, what was it that made people want to make a beeline for this? Well, of course, it's that top one there. The artifact challenges. The Council of Six provide access to a series of unique challenges, allowing worthy heroes to test their might and skill. In other words, you get access to the new artifact skin. But once people have completed that, uh, that particular feature goes away. Now, of course, the first time the Mage Tower was up, the majority of people would not have been able to meet this challenge. I don't know how many did. It'd be interesting to know. Sometimes uh, an achievement troll is done and MMO Champion and, and a site similar to that, like Wowhead, are able to post the results so that we can actually see how many people have achieved, got certain achievements. I'm not sure that they're planning on doing that just for this first one, but you know, probably in a few weeks' time they'll they'll sort of show that one. So for some people, uh, they're going to be quite keen to get the Mage Tower again just for that as well. Um, but would those of us who have completed it still be interested? Now the next one it says down here is one that's sort of a bit curious to me. I don't know whether this is a bug. It wouldn't surprise me there have been a number of bugs with the Broken Shore. Uh, I'm not trying to say that as, as being too critical. Bugs will sort of exist, although some of the bugs have been very strange. Veiled Worm Tongue Chest. The power of the Mage Tower pulses across the Broken Shore, revealing the lucrative Veiled Worm Tongue Chest. Hmm, right. So the Mage Tower isn't currently active. And yet, when I've gone around the Broken Shore this morning, they've still been evident. I can still see them on the minimap, and I still come across them. So, I'm not really entirely sure that this is working as, in, as certainly suggested here. Because it says there, in red, unlocked when the building is active. The building is not active. If I click on those, it doesn't have to say that message. So, it's not a case of, well, the Mage Tower has already been up, so they're now in the game for good. That red writing down there is very clearly indicating that this is only active when the building is. And yet, they're clearly active right now. Um, so, likely to be a bug, that one. The next one is Portal Network. The Kirin Tor provide access to portals which can be used to move quickly around the Broken Isles. So, when the Mage Tower was up, uh, so it's not the moment, but this is the location of it, you had portals inside here to each of the zones within the Broken Isles. Uh, not including Dalaran, it was actually you know, just the zones. Uh, but it allowed you to get around quickly. I suppose for the purpose of invasions, it's quite handy uh, just to be able to get around there. Or I suppose if you're on the Broken Shore and you're completing your world quest and then you want to go to wherever the emissary cache is, uh, it allows you to quickly hop to at least the first of those that you want to go to. So, you know, you know, convenient, uh, not overwhelmingly powerful. So out of these, which one seems to be the really powerful one? Well, the artifact challenges, because a lot of people really want that. I'm not that bothered about the skin, which is why I'm not using it at the moment. I should really use it just for the sake of completing the other achievements. People have told me that, and I probably will have to, and then find a suitable transmog for it. Oh, can't be asked. <laughs> but, you know, that one, yeah, highly desirable, definitely. But once you've completed it, it sort of it's, it doesn't matter anymore. The Veiled Worm Tongue Chest, it's probably bugged, but at the moment, it's not really doing anything for that, because they're active now. The Portal Network, bit of convenience. But then we come to the power overwhelming aspect of it. Completing world quests is a chance to grant an extra artifact power token. Now, this is uh, one that seems to cycle around. If you check out the building section on Wowhead, and I'll put a link in the description below, you can actually see that there are multiple possible bonuses. In fact, for each building, in terms of that bottom bonus, there are four different types. And some people, I think, felt that one of them, you know, that, that all of them would be active or you'd get a choice of which one. It's not a choice. Um, 
So the last time that the Mage Tower was active, then what we got was a chance to get a Tome of Extra Artifact Power when we were completing things like Dungeons and Raids. So this is a slightly different one. This is now for completing World Quests, we get an extra chance at that uh, Artifact Power bonus. So rather than getting them from Dungeons and Raids, it will be from, from Artifact Power. But more on those sort of cycles of four later on. So that's the Mage Tower. So what bonus are we effectively getting from it? The, the, the real tangible bonus, once we've completed our Artifact Skin, it's the chance of extra Artifact Power, which is not bad, um, reasonably useful. But when you sort of consider that at the moment, at least, that's the only thing of use from it, um, is it really all that great? It's not all that great, I would say, in my personal opinion. The next one that was completed was the Nether Disruptor. So what do we get with this one? Well, we get world, extra world bosses. So there's uh, an extra world boss on the, the Broken Shore there that we can do. Gives you uh, access to potentially good gear, especially if you're on a low level out. The Unstable Nether Portal. So you find these around. The Nether Disruptor's activation causes unstable nether portals to be across the Broken Shore. Activate them to summon dangerous foes. And what you need to activate them, of course, is... Let me get the right one. I don't think it's off this guy, is it? No. Wrong one. You get a nether portal disruptor for, ooh, 250 nether shards. I'm pretty sure on the PTR that was 50 nether shards. That's gone up in price. Uh, but it summons in an elite, which a group of you can take down to get some uh, bits and pieces. Not really my cup of tea. But then the armor craft accommodations. Well, this is very similar to the skin there. So you get quests that allow you, if you've got the appropriate profession of leatherworking, blacksmithing, or tailoring, to learn the pattern for a crafted legendary. And, of course, the legendary belt at the moment is bugged. See my video on that one. Um, but, yeah, it allows you to get that crafted legendary while that one is up. So, again, it's the sort of thing that the first time it goes up or the first couple of times it goes up, people are going to be quite keen on. They want to sort of complete those quests and get that pattern. Maybe they'll then want to craft the item as well uh, for some extra gold. But presumably, as time goes on, the price of these things is going to fall down. It's already tumbled down quite a bit, but it's still worth doing. It's still, you would still make a very tidy profit of uh, well over 100% profit on those Um Especially if you're you know, willing, if you're around here anyway, farming nether shards and can buy the legendary item there. But again, in terms of tangible benefits, well, the world boss is a tangible benefit. You can go there uh, for the chance of some reasonable loot, depending on the item level of your character. The unstable nether portals uh, are a useful feature as well if you're into doing group stuff on there for farming rep or anything like that, or nether shards indeed. But then the extra bonus here, Fate Smiles Upon You. So again, this is one of four. It'll be a different one the next time the Nether Disruptor comes up. If you fail your bonus roll on the Broken Isles, there is a chance you will have your Seal of Fate, Broken Fate, refunded. Uh, only applies on the Broken Isles. Uh, is that all that useful? A chance? What's the chance? Is it 50-50? I actually did try it on the World Best Boss just because I had a few uh, coins. Um... And I got lucky, I, I spent my coin, got artifact power, and then got the coin refunded, so that was nice. It was basically free artifact power from that point of view, uh, so that was decent. Is that the best bonus? Not really, but as I say, it does change each time, and, and some of the other ones, which I'll talk about in a bit, uh, are pretty good. And then finally, the command center. This is the last one that was built. So what do we get with this one? Well, it says, with the command established, efforts are focused on assaulting the Cathedral of Night. In other words, Cathedral of Night, World Quest. Now, you can't see it here because I've completed it. There was a bit of an issue. When this building went up yesterday, people noted, uh, when they did it, that they weren't getting rep for the armies of Legion Fall. And as people were noted, this made it the only dungeon World Quest in the game that doesn't award rep. And it was... You know, people were sort of making the, the view of oh, Blizzard being a bit tight here. Uh, it turns out, or it's, it, I mean, Blizzard haven't, I don't think, said anything about it. Uh, but it was just an error. It has, it does now give rep. I have just done that world quest today. I didn't do it yesterday. And it did give rep. Uh, so, like 250 rep, I think, something like that, or close to that. So it knows, does now give rep. It also gave an item. It gives different things to different people. Remember, like all world quests, it's sort of class specific. Uh, it gave me, as a paladin, an intellect trinket. You think, okay, holy. You know, healing, spec, fine. Um, your damaging spells have a chance to increase your mastery, haste, or critical strike. I mean, yeah, okay. Holy paladins 
do sometimes chuck out spells. They do some, like all healers, you know, in times of lighter healing, you want to be kicking out the damage as well. But at the same time, casters, you know, at least, I think priests at least, there was a priest in our guild saying, oh, they would have quite liked that. Um, they weren't getting it. Or whichever caster it was that was saying that. So a bit of a strange in terms of the other or world quest reward that you are getting. I would say that is much better suited to casters than uh, paladins, even holy paladins, but there you go. But you do at least now get rep for it. So the next thing is Legion Fall reinforcements. Commanders of Legion Fall are provided with additional support throughout the Broken Isles. Uh, what happens here is every now and then an NPC spawns in to help you out, like a warden it seems to be. Uh, a bit like the Demon Hunters when you're in the sort of south area of Ashara. Um, more useful for some people than for others. I, I don't find it all that useful. But a lot of people maybe with lower item level. Remember, although they did the mob scaling thing, it was always intended that it still gets easier. They're not, it's not linearly uh, scaling with your item level. It's just smooths it out a bit. So the better your gear, the easier time you still have on them. So, you know, some people might relish uh, an extra little helper along with the champion that they may take as well. And the final one is the challenge mission. Send worthy champions on a challenging but lucrative mission deep into the heart of the Broken Shore. Now here again has been a bit of misinformation. Um, entirely caused by miscommunication on Blizzard's part, I would suggest. So what happened is the building went up yesterday and people were looking on the... Because you can get to the mission table here. So you can access the mission table here. And they saw uh, a mission, just a normal mission, that gave Artifact Pound. People thought that that was the extra mission and it wasn't uh, it's a rare mission which we can now see here which awards well with the artifact knowledge i think 27 that i have 5.3 million artifact power it's a rare mission 900 item level so you need to have boosted up your followers to decent um item level to obviously be able to do this but nonetheless there it is i would agree that that is lucrative and i think people are going to be quite happy about that but yeah, the first time the building went up, this mission was not there. Uh, and, and perhaps it should have been there right from the start. So people just saw like their normal missions and thought that one of them, you know, they just assumed that, that a standard one that just happened to have popped at the same time was the one uh, that this is referring to that was only given like a quarter of a million AP and taking several days to complete, which was not the case at all. Again, whether that was a bug, whether... Blizzard had intended that the mission did appear straight away or not, I don't know. I would certainly say it should, because again of misinformation. If you're going to read this and this is active, and you see, oh, there's an extra lucrative mission appeared, you would go straight to your table and go, all right, where is it then? Um, so it does need to be there. And the final one for the command center is inc increases all primary stats by 10% while in less challenging areas of the Broken Shore, which I think just means the Broken Shore that doesn't include the dungeon and raid. Again, out of the, the sort of four cycling one, it's not that great, is it, this one? Um, and I think the view on forums seems to be, aside from the, the unintended things, as I say, some of the criticisms being launched at these are, for the command centre in particular, there's been a lot of scorn, one of which is the fact that people didn't realise that the lucrative mission just hadn't appeared yet. Uh, it's totally understandable because it wasn't clear. And the other thing is uh, about the uh, well-prepared thing. The, the stats thing is not that great. Some people also are a bit unhappy with the nether disruptor, but I'll talk about that one in, uh, next. So what is the order in people's minds still? I think people are still much happier about the mage tower but maybe that opinion will change once they realize that these bot these lower bonuses here cycle around a set and some are better than others i think people might appreciate the command center a bit more once people start to see that the challenge mission is potentially more useful and that the cathedral world quest does give rep but at the same time what you really want is something that gives you extra rep as well at this particular time. Now, if we look at the bonuses that cycle around, the four bonuses for each one, if we look at the Mage Tower, now the one we had when it first went up was called Knowledgeable, and this is the one that gives us a chance at getting extra artifact power from dungeons and raids, and that's what we had when the, the Mage Tower went up. 
The one we can see that will appear the next time the Mage Tower goes up will be Power Overwhelming, which is the chance to gain extra artifact power from World Quests. Then the next one, Reputable. Increase reputation gains with armies of Legion Fall. Now I'm going to point out here, Blizzard are putting themselves on a bit of a hiding to nothing. Here's the thing. Knowledgeable people are going to overappreciate it. Extra artifact power from Dungeons and Raids. Fantastic. People love that. Power overwhelming. People will still be okay with that because although you most people only want to do the bare minimum of world quests, they're still going to get some extra artifact power out of it. But you can choose to do more of them. You can choose to do all the world quests available whenever they appear and get yourself some extra artifact power that way. So people will feel that that is still a good bonus. But when the reputable one comes along, that'll be the third time that the Mage Tower has gone up. It'll be two or three weeks, well, a couple of weeks at least, into the patch. I feel that people are going to complain about this one, not because it's a bad one, but because it would have been more useful early on. People already want champion at the bit to get flying. And, and this is, in, surely in, in almost everyone's case, the achievement that, people are waiting on the rep getting the reputation of um revered with armies of legion fall which itself was nerfed it used to need to be exalted i think as well as do the invasions they've kicked out the invasions so yeah you're gonna have people going i'd have liked that when i was actually doing loads of stuff on the broken shore uh, and could have benefited on it so blizzard are gonna give they're onto a hiding for nothing for that one and then the final one light as a feather you gain water walking while mounted <laughs> yeah good thanks very much um for those who don't have the azure the, the thing about this is of course i know blizzard i know Indian has a cost in particular like is quite disparaging about the azure water strider because uh, it's the only mount that does that they won't make any other mounts that do it it's quite easy to get all right it's a bit of a grind because it's a rep grind from mop you have to go back to mop areas and do that rep grind but it's it's quite quick and easy to get that and um and then you can get that mount. And then everyone has that anyway. So you're providing a bonus that although I will accept maybe not a huge proportion of the players have, all of the players can get quite easily. So uh, I think when that one comes around, people are going to be very, very disappointed. Again, because the other three are strong. That one, weak. Weak. Seriously. Then we come on to the Nether Disruptor because that was, again, people's second choice. And I still think remains people's second choice, even now I've seen them all. So the choices here, this didn't... The one we have now is a chance to refund your Seal of Broken Fate when it falls. Fate smiles upon you. That's the one we've got active now. We don't know which one is going to appear next because, obviously, until that building is destroyed by the Legion and... It appears back on the table as being built up. We won't know what bonus is coming. But the other choices are that we could potentially get a free seal of broken fate every day that the disruptor is up. That's the one that people thought we were getting, by the way. The one where each of those three days that that disruptor is up, we get a free seal. Um, and I think because people have seen that on Wowhead, as I say, uh, and when that didn't happen, and it's just a chance to refund it, I think people felt that Blizzard had sort of nerfed it, when in actual fact, the getting the free seal every day was just one of the four options. And it may be in the next one, it may not. Another one is getting a chance to receive extra nether shard whenever you do anything that gives you nether shards, so you can get sort of bonus nether shards. And the final one is the ability to interact with objects while mounted. Now it's that last one again, which is, uh, because that's just replacing the effect of, say, demon steel hoof plates, something like that. All right, cost you to get those. A lot of people don't use those because there is a cost to them. Uh, blacksmiths can make those. I mean, I'm a blacksmith and I don't even worry about the cost and I don't make those myself because, again, I don't think it's that useful. It's convenient. It's a convenience. But again, it's much weaker than all of the other options, I feel. It's definitely weaker than getting three free broken seals of fate as long as you always make sure you're not topped with them and then the final build in the command center the one that right from the outset was going to be the one that people were going to do last and and even now people are still not happy with it a lot of people feel that this is weak so again what do we get as our bonus at the moment it's well prepared which is a 10 percent bonus to primary stats while on the broken shore but 
Other ones could be war effort, chance to gain extra legion for war supplies. Now, although this may well be the next one to come, again, I think this is going to fall into the same trap as the reputable one, in that people are going to say, we could have done with this straight away. It's always going to be useful, bear in mind, because this is the way that we make the buildings active. So that's always going to be useful. But again, when that initial push was going on, people would have preferred that one. Uh, another one is challenge missions have a greater chance to award a legendary follower equipment. That'll be an interesting one when that comes around. And heavily augmented is a chance to receive a defiled augment rune when completing world quests. So again, another little bonus for doing world quests, you can get the defiled runes of more use to like raiders, potentially mythic plus players. Remember, these runes provide uh, a bonus to primary stats, but they do expire on death. So they're not like flasks or anything like that, which is a downside to them. Uh, not the greatest bonus you could have, it has to be said, not the greatest. Out of all of these ones, the what the two that are going to be more desirable are the Legion 4 wall surprise extras, but also the challenge missions having a greater chance to award legendary follow-up equipment. Now, the key thing about this, of course, now that followers could potentially get uh, legendary stuff, people are going to be... But the question will be, what is that chance? What is that greater chance? Because the chance is already pretty low, I guess. It must be. So it, how much has it been increased by? Because even if you double a really small chance, it's still a really small chance, isn't it? So that one may well be. But just based on the text alone, I think when that one shapes around, people will be a bit keener to put the command center in. But anyway, that's my sort of look at the different buildings and what's going on with them. Hopefully it's informative as well as just presenting what my views are on the different buildings. I think I would probably generally agree with what most people have said right from the start in terms of which are the best one, the Mage Tower followed by the Disruptor followed by the Command Center. Even though I think the Command Center, when it there's a couple of the bonuses that will be useful, but you're only going to get those two out of every four cycles. Do I think the buildings are worth farming in general though? I actually don't. Uh, because if you think about what the bonuses give you, often it's things like extra, I mean, extra Legion 4 war supplies. What's that for? Well, that's just to get the buildings up more quickly. Extra nether shards. Okay, yeah, if you want to be spamming those trinkets to get some really good trinkets, yeah, sure. And when you're, you're farming nether shards, that's going to be really useful. The gains to rep, as soon as we've got revered, are we going to be all that bothered about rep? I'm certainly not. And so ultimately, the main bonuses that we want are the bonuses to artifact power. But when you look at the time spent trying to farm the Legion 4 war supplies, we could acquire as much bonus artifact power from other sources in the same time anyway. So I personally am a little disappointed with the buildings. I'm not going to be hugely critical of them, but I have to say I'm disappointed. But anyway, those are my views on it. I hope you found it useful and enjoyable. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.